Hello, welcome to our daily learning video. Today, we're going to be learning about the letter I. Let me stretch and get the letter I. Comes after H. This is letter I. Can you say I? I. So if your name has an I, stand up. If your name has an I, stand up. If your name has an I, if your name has an I, if your name has an I, stand up. So that's what the letter I looks like. And today we're going to talk about I is for inchworms. So that's how we're decorating the letter I. I have some green yarn. And I just took that green yarn and glued it onto my letter I. It's still kind of drying. And then I just took also, I know everybody doesn't have green yarn, so you could just take a green marker and draw on some inchworms. So that was just a fun way to put some little inchworms on our letter I. And you might decorate yours in another way. Maybe you have a, even a better idea than that. So that's what I looks like. I is the letter name. And now we're gonna to try to write the letter I. So this is our handwriting time. So to make an I, all you need is a number one with a top and a bottom. Can you do that? So make a number one with a top and a bottom, just like that. I'll show you what that looks like on handwriting paper. You just need a number one upstairs and downstairs and then trace across the top and the bottom. One top bottom. One with a top and a bottom. Make a one with a top and a bottom. Now you can pause and practice, or you can just wait and practice for homework if you'd like to. Now I wanna show you how to make a little letter I, but I have to tell you something, little I has an itchy dot. Sometimes I go outside and a mosquito bites me and it leaves an itchy dot behind. Well, little I has an itchy dot. Make a little number one and give it a dot, just like that one with a dot. Let's practice. One with a dot. The one is downstairs and the dot is upstairs. Toss it up like a ball upstairs in the middle. One with a dot. One dot. One dot. One dot. One more. One with a dot. Well, I'm going to send you a sticker because I know that you are working so hard on your handwriting. So here it comes. That is for you. I wish I could really put it on your handwriting paper. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what letter I sounds like. But before we do, can you remember those special letters we've talked about? The vowels. The vowels are... A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I, O, U, A, E, I, O, U. These are the vowels. Well, you know what that means. I is a vowel, so we are going to get a visit from one of the vowel people, and here he comes. There he is. This is my friend I, and my friend I loves lollipops. He eats lollipops for breakfast. He eats lollipops for lunch. He eats lollipops for dinner. But when he eats all those lollipops, he gets sticky and icky. And he says, Ew. can you say that? Ew. Well, if you look at letter I, he has some icky, sticky stuff all over him. I says, eh. And if you look really closely, you can see an I hiding in the picture. Where is letter I? 
It's his lollipop. His lollipop looks like the letter I. So I'm hoping that when you see an I, you're going to remember that I looks like an icky sticky lollipop. And then you'll remember I says I. Well, we're gonna practice that sound today with a little game. So I'm gonna let you put some itchy dots on me if you can tell me what I sounds like. So what does I say? I says, eh. Oh, another itchy dot for Miss Kathy. What does letter I say? Eh. Good job, that means, I get another itchy dot. What does letter I say? I. Good job again. Oh, another itchy dot right on my chinny chin chin. What does letter I say? I. Another itchy dot. What? What does letter I say? I. Not an itchy dot on my nose, too. One more. What does letter I say? I. Oh, my goodness. I'm so itchy. Well, Sue wanted to play the game, too. So let me get Sue and let's play the game, but in a little different way. Come on, Sue. It's your turn to play. Well, Sue, we're going to put itchy dots on you this time. If our friends can tell us if these words have an I in the middle. So if you hear I in the middle of these words, thumbs up. But if you don't hear I, thumbs down. Okay, are you ready to play? All right, the first word is pin. Do you hear I in the middle? Pin. Yes, thumbs up, thumbs up. That means you get to put an edgy dot on Sue. All right, let's do the next one. Him. Him. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, good job. You get to put another edgy dot on Sue. What about this word? Bit. Bit. Thumbs up again. Oh, Sue, look at all these itchy dots. All right, what about this one? Hat. Hat. Mm, no, thumbs down. But you can still put an itchy dot because you got it right. You did thumbs down. Okay, what about this one? Sit. Sit. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Good, very good. Oh. A itchy dot on Sue's lip. Oh, that's so funny. What about this word, Kim? Do you hear I? Kim. Mm -hmm, I do too. Thumbs up. Sue, so we're going to put it right on your nose. The next word is pat. Pat. No, I don't hear I in the middle. So let's put that itchy dot right there on Sue. The next one is, it's the last one, Finn. Finn. Yes, thumbs up, thumbs up. Very good. Let's put it on her neck. Oh, so there are itchy dots all over you and all over me too. Why don't we clean these itchy dots up and get to some math next, okay? Okay, that's better. For math today, we're going to be doing some measuring and we're going to measure inchworms. So this is a ruler. A ruler has numbers on it. Let's count the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Standard rulers have even more numbers. They have 12 and each one of these numbers is an inch. One inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, five inches, six inches, and so forth, all the way down to 12 inches. Well, we're going to be using a ruler today to measure these inchworms, and here's how it works. You have to put whatever object you're measuring right at the end where the ruler begins, and then look with your eyes at the other end of the object 
and see what number you're near. So what number is at the end of the inchworm? Number three. So that means this inchworm is three inches long. Let's measure the next one. What number is near where the inchworm ends? Five. So this inchworm is about five inches long. Okay, let's keep going. So what number is near where this inchworm ends? Four. So this inchworm is about four inches long. All right, next, look at that little inchworm. Let's measure. So what number is near where this inchworm ends? Two. So this inchworm is two inches long. Last one, look at that baby inchworm. He's sleeping. So what number is near where the end of the baby inchworm is? Number one. So this baby inchworm is one inch long. Well, if you want to, you can cut out that ruler from this paper or find another ruler like me and you can do some more measuring today. I'm going to be measuring some inchworms. Actually, they're gummy worms. But let's take a look at this one and I'll remind you how you measure. So you just what it, take whatever object you're measuring and put it at the end of the ruler where the ruler begins. And then you look with your eyes and you see what number is near the end of the object. So what number is right here at the end of the inchworm? Four. So this inchworm is four inches long. Let's measure this inchworm. So remember, we just put it right at the end of the ruler and look with our eyes and see what number is near the other end of the inchworm. It's near number five. So this inchworm is five inches long. Look at this little baby inchworm. Oh, so remember what to do? Put the inchworm at the end of the ruler. Look with your eyes and see what number is near the other end. And that's the number two. So this little baby inchworm is two inches long. So have fun with some measuring and math today. Next, we're going to be working on our shape practice and we are gonna be making a cube. So I have this printable and the lesson plans and worksheet links at the website below, my website. But um, if you want to, you can pause and go get yours and do it with me, or you can just watch me, that's okay too. So I'm just going to cut all the way around this shape. Don't cut any of these inside lines. Just go all the way around the outside. And this is really, I think, a great a scissor cutting practice because all the lines are straight. So hopefully this will give you some practice with your scissor skills because they're just straight, straight, straight lines. So I'm just going to cut all around the outside. Okay. So just keep going if you're cutting too. And if you're not, you can just watch me and I'll put this one together for us. Okay, so there you go. I just cut out all the outsides. Now these inside lines will be folded. Right now this is flat, but remember a cube is a 3D shape. It's not flat. So I want you to fold everywhere there's a line. Fold, fold, and even these tabs, fold. Everywhere you see a line, fold, fold, fold. Once you get all those lines folded, it really kind of puts itself together. Just bring it all up to the middle and it makes a cube. We're gonna tape it to secure it. So let's do that now. So I'm just going to bring, you see the tab goes under, and I'm just going to tape it 
on all the sides. Almost done. You could also glue it, but I'm trying to be just a little bit faster. So I'm going to just tape it. And also, I think tape kind of holds it still. Glue might keep moving around and frustrate you a little bit. So maybe tape's better for this. OK, so there you have it. I got all the, the sides taped. And now I made a paper cube. Do you remember what we learned about a cube? A cube is a 3D shape. See, it's not flat anymore. And a cube has squares on all of its sides. Square, 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 all over the place. And a cube has six faces. A face is the flat part on a 3D object. I made lots of cubes today, so I'm going to stack them over there. You can make some more cubes, too, if you'd like. And if you want to color them, the tip is to color before you cut it out, or at least before you fold it up so and put it together because then it's a little harder to cut or to color when it's all together. Okay, so for music and movement, I'm going to put a link below to an inchworm song if you want to listen to that. It's really fun and all I have to do is move your finger like that and then also count because the inchworm is going to grow one inch, two inches, three inches, four inches, five inches. So I'm going to put the link below for your music and movement time today. And now we're going to move right into art. For art, we're going to make an inchworm. So let's head over to the art table, everybody. Here we are at the art table, and I'm going to use a balloon today to make an inchworm. So I just blew up a small balloon, and I didn't blow it very big. And then I'm just going to take some green paint. I'll squirt out a little more. And I'm going to dip the balloon into the paint. See that? And then I'm going to stamp it onto some paper like this. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna keep stamping and stamping and stamping until I have a little inchworm. Now, if you don't have a balloon, you could also use a ball if you wanted to, and then just wash it after. So I'm just going to put a little eye on my inchworm, and I'm going to put some legs here in the front and some legs here at the back. So that's our little fun inchworm that we made today for art. I'm going to come back around now, and let's do some science and learn about inchworms. Okay, so I think I will hang up our inchworm paper there so you can take a look at it. And now I think we should learn about inchworms. They're pretty cool. Did you notice we only put legs in the front and the back of this inchworm? Well, I'm gonna tell you all about that right now. First of all, let's start at the beginning. Inchworms start out their lives as eggs. They spend the cold winter months attached to the underside of leaves. They hatch in early spring. And as soon as they hatch, those tiny little earthworms begin eating and eating and eating. The inchworm starts to grow too. It gets bigger and bigger, but an inchworm has skin that can't grow with it. So it needs to shed the old skin, kind of like a snake sheds its skin. They'll do this several times during the inchworm stage. Well, when they're big enough, they begin to put a hard shell around themselves called a pupa, the same way that a caterpillar spins a cocoon around itself. Well, when enough time has passed, out from the pupa pops a moth. That's right, an inchworm turns into a moth, just like a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Well, I told you those inchworms like to eat and eat. They mostly eat leaves and fruit, and they do have legs on both ends, but not in the middle, no legs there. So the way that an inchworm moves is it makes its front legs go forward 
and then it moves its back legs to catch up and then it makes its front legs go forward and then moves its back legs to catch up. That's why it makes that cool shape when it walks. Those back legs are just trying to catch up to the front legs. Well, this is pretty cool. Now, God designed some pretty cool things, and I think the inchworm is one of them. An inchworm can spin silk like a spider. So when danger approaches, they can drop quickly from the leaf that they're feeding on and hang from the end of a silken strand. The silk is soft at first, but it gets hard after a while. And once the danger has passed, the inchworm can actually climb back up that hardened silk back to the leaf that it was eating on. That is pretty cool. Well, I want to read a story about an inchworm before we say goodbye. This story is called Inch by Inch by Leo Leone. Inch by Inch. One day, a hungry robin saw an inchworm, green as an emerald, sitting on a twig. He was about to gobble him up. Don't eat me. I'm an inchworm. I am useful. I measure things. Is that so, said the robin, then measure my tail. That's easy, said the inchworm. One, two, three, four, five, five inches. Just think, said the robin, my tail is five inches long. And with the inchworm on his back, he flew to where other birds needed to be measured. The inchworm measured the neck of a flamingo. He measured the toucan's beak. He measured the legs of a heron. He measured the tail of the pheasant. And he measured the whole hummingbird. One morning, the nightingale bird met the inchworm. Measure my song, said the nightingale. But how can I do that? asked the inchworm. I measure things, not songs. Measure my song or I'll eat you for breakfast, said the nightingale. Then the inchworm had an idea. I'll try, he said. Go ahead and sing. The nightingale sang and the inchworm measured away. He measured and measured inch by inch until he inched out of sight. The end. <laughs> so he outsmarted that bird, didn't he? He inched his way out of sight. <gasps> And then the bird didn't know where he went. He was safe and sound. Well, I hope you've had some fun today with letter I. I'll see you next time for letter J. Goodbye.